my brothers and sisters in Christ, good afternoon. I'm here once again to talk to you people with the word of God and prayers. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, King of heaven and earth, we glorify your holy name because you alone are holy, you alone are good, you are the Alpha and the Omega. We worship and glorify you all the days of our life. Receive all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration, all the praise, and all thanksgiving. We will revere you all the days of our life. Father, may we worship you in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in the night. Father, as we go to bed, may our bodies, may our souls begin to praise and worship you. Father, may everything around us praise and glorify your holy name in Jesus' mighty name of prayer. Father, have mercy upon us any way we might have sinned against you. Father, for we know the prayer of a sinner doesn't climb up to you, but Father, we come before you because we know you are our Redeemer who redeemed us with the precious blood. Upon this note, we call upon your precious blood to begin to cleanse us and to begin to save us. Let this precious blood from Calvary begin to cleanse us from all iniquity. Begin to cleanse our land, begin to cleanse our brothers and sisters and friends. Father, do not punish us for the sins of our ancestors. Do not punish us for the sins of our parents. Punish us for the sins of our brothers and sisters and friends. Father, let no guilt be held upon us. Father, we confess our sins and we will be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Pray. Father, send down your Holy Spirit to come and to that control upon us. Let everything we do be guided by the Spirit of God. Let it be guided by the true Spirit. May your Holy Spirit come down upon us like the day of Pentecost. May he begin to give us wisdom and understanding. May he begin to unite us. May he begin to give us all the seven fruits. May he begin to give us all the twelve, the Holy Spirit. May they begin to come down. May they begin to come down and begin to fill us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we come against any power and authority that is not of you. Any way they might have gathered, <coughs> Father, may they be destroyed. May they be destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, any weapon fashioned against your children, <coughs> Father, we come against it, we overshadow it because you've given us power to uproot. You gave us power to uproot. Father, may we begin to uproot every garden of the enemy now. Anyway, they might have gathered, destroy them in Jesus' mighty name. Father, are they coming from the Republic? Holy Ghost fire. Are they coming from any colonial power? Holy Ghost fire. Father, anywhere they might come from, where they want to know, are they from the air, from the land, from the sea? Anywhere, if they are monitoring spirit and spies, Holy Ghost fire, Father, may they begin to be destroyed in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. O you spirit of the living God, descend and destroy in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we call upon all your angels, all your apostles, our immaculate mother to guide and defend us at this period in time. Protect all our loved ones. Father, you said you sent your angels upon us and no power will be able to overthrow us. Father, may these angels of Psalm 91 begin to guide and protect each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, today our topic is the enemies you see today, you will see no more. The enemies you see today, you will see no more. Our talk is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 18. The book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 18. The enemies you see today, you shall see them no more. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. My brothers and sisters of Saudi Cameroon, the enemies you see today, you shall see them no more. The Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. La Republic you see today, you shall see them no more. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Neocolonialism you see today, you shall see no more. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I read. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see what Yahweh will do to rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Yahweh will do the fighting for you. All you need to do is to keep calm. Amen. That is the reading from the Jerusalem Bible. Exodus 14, 13 to 14. Last time I said, the battle is of the Lord. 
Today I'm telling you, the enemies you see today, you shall see no more. Our God is telling us, like he told the people of Israel through Moses, keep calm, watch and see what the Lord will do. Amen. My brothers and sisters, faith is believing without doubt. Faith is believing what has not yet been revealed. If it is revealed, it is no longer faith, but experience or history. Now what we have us is our faith. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we have been in a state of torture, torture, 55 years of suffering, 55 years of slavery. Today the Lord is telling you, sons and daughters of Southern Cameroon, be calm and watch what I will do. For La Republic, you see today, you will see no more. Amen. Any power that stands against a just fight is bound to lose. The Lord spoke through Moses. What we need to do, do not be afraid. The word fear not, do not be afraid, appears 666 times in the Bible. To show how much it is emphasized. Many times Christ told, be not afraid, fear not. My brothers and sisters, I know they are out to destabilize us by killing, by raping, by torturing, but the Lord is calling us today. He's telling you, victory is by your side. Fear not. For the Republic you see today, you shall see no more. Please. There are many people coming now calling themselves prophet, prophetizing the situation of Cameroon. All those I don't want to hear. Any prophecy that has to deal with something, God gives prophecy for a purpose. If God gives a prophecy, it is either to warn the people beforehand, you cannot come when there is already a problem with no situation. Begin to come and say, God revealed to you about Cameroon. People coming from the north to this and that and that. All those are bullshit. Today the Lord is talking to you and I by reading our Bible and praying. The Lord is asking us one thing. The Lord says, He is ready to rescue us. We should be calm. How are we going to be calm? It's difficult to be calm when they are killing your brothers, raping your sisters, adopting your parents. But the Lord is asking us to obey our consortium leaders. All those Claiming to come out with decision, claiming to call off the strike. They did not call the strike. So how can they call it off? The Lord is talking to you through the consortium leader. Be calm. He will give you victory. Be calm. He will give you victory. Our victory is on the cross of Calvary. They can carry all our munitions. They can carry off. We are on Calvary. And the Lord is talking to you. He's talking to me. That we should be calm. He will fight the battle for us. All what we need to do is be calm. How can we be calm? Obey. I will release to you something now. 11 February, the consortium leaders have called us to boycott it. There are some individuals who have gone to betray us in Yahudi. I'm telling you this, mark my words. These so-called people who have been bought over will be assassinated. And when they will be assassinated, they will declare a state of emergency to say it is because some terrorists assassinated some people, they declared a state of emergency. That's why we did not go for the 11 February. That is the plan of La Republic. My brothers and sisters, beware, be calm. Nobody should go out on that day. These so-called people who have gone and betrayed I pray God, I pray God that the public changes this plan so that their life could be spared and they could repent. If not, they will pay with their own blood, just like it happened to Ananias and Sapphira in Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. My brothers and sisters, the Lord is calling us to be calm. If the Republic doesn't change his plan, it's going to assassinate all these traitors before the 11th of February. And then they will use that as a pretext to declare a state of emergency. By so doing, they will be able to justify to the international scene why there was no 11 February. All I'm calling my people of good will be calm. No schools. 
I hear in the Northwest it has already been declared by the church that they cannot meet up with the school year. The school year has already been declared blank. So I'm calling on all my brothers and sisters in the Southwest. Be calm, stay in the house. It's better to have a sound education with time rather to have a haphazard education which we have no future, no value. Amen. The Lord is calling us to be calm. For the enemies we see today, we shall see no more. The Lord is calling you and I today to pray unceasingly for this situation. Why do we need prayers now? Because later it will be too late for us to pray. We need prayers now because later it will be too late for us to pray. I will give you an example. In the, in the Bible, there is the story of David in the, the book of Samuel, 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel verses, uh, chapter 12, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 15, right up to verse 25. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 15 to 25. The story of David, how David lost the son. David's son was sick. The son he had through an affair was sick. So when the son was seriously sick, David went fasting. David went praying. David could not eat. David was in sad cloud already. Praying, begging God, Father, I'm the one who sees me. Punish me and do not punish my son. And after some days, this son of David died, King David the Great. When the son died, the soldiers who were around, who were taking care of this, the servant, they were afraid to tell David that his son is dead. Because they asked themselves, if David could cry, could behave like this when the son was always sick, how will he behave now that the son is dead? So they were afraid to tell him. When he saw them, he asked them, what is wrong? Is my son dead? They said yes. Immediately David removed his sad cloth, put on nice cloth, drank it, and started dancing, praising the God, and said, Father, I know he's dead today, but we shall meet tomorrow. There is nothing like when the people ask me, David, how come when I saw was sick, you were mourning, now that he's dead, you're happy. If it were in a situation today, the father would be accused to have used the son for some ritual sacrifice. But David told them, I was praying, I was fasting, so that God could have mercy on me at that time, so that my son could not, should not die. But now that he's dead already, what should I be fasting for? What should I be mourning for? So I'm calling on all of you members of Southern Cameroon. This is the time for us to pray. This is the time for us to do vigils. This is the time for us, all you Catholics, to take at least each day an hour of Eucharistic adoration. If you are in a parish where they don't do exposure, just go in the church before the blessed, before the tabernacle, if you just kneel down in the church, the altar is there, Christ is there, really present. An hour each day, I, you don't know what it can cost. Those of you who can make daily masses, it is time we do these sacrifices for our cause. If on the 13th of February, our fathers who have been kidnapped will be killed, our fastings and prayers will have no value. If La Republic crush all of us down, our fasting and prayers will have no value. Now that they still have plans, is the time we cry to God because he has promised us victory. It is left for us now to cry, pray unceasingly like the Egyptians, like the Israelites prayed while they were in Egypt. It is time for us now to pray, to call upon God, tell him, Father, do this for us. Let us pray like David was praying when the son was sick, so that we'll have victory. And during the time of victory, we'll do thanksgiving. It will be useless after our parents, our fathers have been kidnapped, our fathers have been accused for high treason, which merits death sentence. It is now we have to pray, because if we pray later, all these things will be useless. Now it's time for sacrifice. My brothers and sisters, go on your knees and pray, for the Lord is calling us. To come unto him and he will redeem us. He is telling us, the enemies you see today, you shall see no more. La Republic you see today, you shall see no more. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Father, I thank you. I thank you for this message. I am beginning to ask, who is like our God? Nobody can battle with the Lord. Nobody can battle with the Lord. Exodus 15, 11 to 13 tells us, who is like our God? Who is like our God? Nobody. Bia is useless. Mosonga is useless. Philomonia is useless. Okala, the light are all useless. Nalova, they are useless. They came out, they are useless. They have no power. They are powerless. Just a word from God. Just cry to God. He will make them paralyzed. My brothers and sisters, it is time we go to God in prayers. With faith. If your faith does not endure, it is useless. These are times God wants to try us and see if we really love him. If we go to the book of Romans, Romans 5, it tells us, I am happy in times of problems because problem brings endurance. Endurance brings hope. It is in times of problems that we endure, we persevere. Like they say in Pigeon, who's in lucky Gongambe? It is when we have problems that we know those who have faith. It is when we have problems that we know those who believe in God. Because if you don't have problems, you would have you wouldn't lose your faith. Nobody will go to a native doctor to a soothsayer if he doesn't have problem. It is time of problem that we we'll see those who will still remain on to the Lord. It is time we we'll begin to move. It is time we we'll change our habits. It is time we we'll look upon the true God and worship Him in truth and in spirit. It is time we we'll shun from certain activities. Pray, pray without ceasing. The Lord will give us victory. He is telling us the enemies you see today, you shall see no more. I'm telling you, La Republic, they are planning to assassinate all the traitors. So they will give, they will blame us, and then they will use that to declare a state of emergency. They will say, These are the people who call for school, and the terrorists have killed them. That is their plan. So those who, are, who have ears should hear. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are calling on each and every one of you to do a sacrifice of prayers. A sacrifice, this is the time we should go fasting. This is the time we should avoid abstain from certain things. And the Lord will give us victory. I'm calling on all my brothers in Italy on the 10th, on the 10th of February, we are going to Rome to the British Embassy. We are going to give our plight there. I'm calling on each and every one of us to be present. Those around Europe who can make it will be a good occasion. If our number is heavy, we'll make something. And after that, the next project is to see the Pope. This problem, as I'm telling you, the Lord is calling us. He's telling us already. The enemies you see today, you shall see no more. Can you people join me and say, La Republic, you see today, you shall see no more. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The Atangananji you see today, you shall see no more in Jesus' mighty name we pray. The BI you see today, you shall see no more in Jesus' mighty name we pray. The beams you see, you shall see no more in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I call upon you. Our battle is faith. And I promise God will give us. I'm just using this to appeal. If we should have an independence, let us eliminate certain things like the gendarme, the army, who can live without, live as a Christian state, we trust the police to maintain law and order, not the Bokum police or the Aram Jadams who can live without problems. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Lord is calling you. He's giving you victory. It is left for us now to go to the Lord in prayers. For he's telling you, he's telling me. The Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more. The Bialist you see today, you shall see no more. The Lord is in command. The Lord is in command. Appointment rendezvous 11th, a 10th of February in Rome. I want to use this as an opportunity to talk to my friends in Italy, a bit in Italian, so that they will understand, because when I post, most of them don't understand. Carissimi fratelli e sorelli, siamo una situation triste in Cameroon. Cameroon si trova in Africa centrale, ma abbiamo Cameroon inglese e Cameroon francese. Ottobre fino a oggi, questa parte di Cameroon inglese sta 
sofferendo perché il nostro sistema di educazione era il sistema francese. I nostri bambini loro facciano la scuola come professore in francese che non capiscono la lingua inglese. Nel nostro tribunale tutti i giudici e avvocati sono di sistema francese, invece non capiscono la lingua inglese, e sono loro i giudici. Tutti gli amministratori nelle nostre zone inglesi sono della lingua francese. E abbiamo fatto un gruppo di persone che hanno chiesto ai, al nostro autore e presidente di dia, un dialogo per vedere come queste cose possono essere aggiustate. Invece lui ha mandato i soldati per far morire le persone. Hanno violato i nostri figli e hanno preso tanti di loro nel carcere. Adesso alcuni dei nostri papà sono nel carcere e loro hanno deciso di far morire tre decidi di questa mese. Loro sono accusati di terrorismo e anche tanti altri crimini. Sì, se loro, se Dio non aiutano, dopo loro saranno uccisi. Adesso questa è la situazione del Camerun. Chiediamo a tutti voi di pregare per il Camerun del Sud, il Camerun inglese. Ma il nostro Dio è onnipotente, lui è più forte che tutti questi amministratori. Abbiamo mandato tanti video su Facebook che mostrano come loro hanno ucciso tante persone. Adesso nella zona inglese non c'è internet, non posso telefonare ai miei genitori perché il Presidente lui ha tolto l'internet e tutte le altre cose. Io chiedo a voi tutti, 11 febbraio, la comunità del Camerun inglese che stiamo qua in Italia, abbiamo un appuntamento con l'ambasciatore di Inghilterra. Io chiedo a voi tutti che possono partecipare, di essere a Roma con noi e rimanere sempre insieme in preghiera. Grazie a tutti. Je veux parler un peu à mes frères francophones. Je sais que beaucoup de vous sont avec nous, mais vous n'avez pas de courage à parler. Et beaucoup de vous, disons, vous avez peur. Mais je vous dis, cette lutte, ce combat, ce n'est pas seulement pour les anglophones, comme vous disiez, ce n'est pas seulement pour Southern Cameroun. Ça sera pour tout le Cameroun. Parce que le Cameroun, le Cameroun va mal. Paul vient de faire que nous mettre dans les difficultés. Nous n'avons pas un problème contre vous, les francophones. Nous avons notre problème particulier. Si il vous amène, comme certains qui sont les militaires, qu'on amène de tuer vos propres frères, je vous rappelle, l'histoire va vous prendre. Moi, par exemple, j'ai passé beaucoup de temps à Douala. J'ai fait l'université de Douala, j'ai enseigné dans plusieurs lycées à Douala. Lycée d'Aqua, lycée de Nubé, lycée Bilen de Mabanda, lycée Bilen de Manoka, tant de, en tant que euh, beaucoup d'établissements à Douala. Je vous rappelle, c'est le moment de prier avec nous. C'est le moment de dénoncer cet acte barbarique. Vous avez vos frères et sœurs qui sont dans la mer, qui sont dans la gendarmerie qui sont dans le but, également comme nous avons aussi nos frères et sœurs qui sont dedans, mais on vous envoie de venir tuer vos propres frères et vous le faites. Ça, ce n'est pas un problème. Hein. Dieu est avec nous. Maintenant, c'est le temps que nous tous, on peut se lever, à lever sept bourreaux qu'on avait comme président. C'est le moment pour nous tous de parler notre pays. 34 ans de pouvoir, de rien. Qu'est-ce que vous, vous êtes en train de bénéficier? Qu'est-ce que nous bénéficions? 
Vous avez vos frères russes qui sont à Boya également. À ce moment, eux aussi souffrent, n'ont pas d'Internet, ne peuvent aussi pas appeler. Ça, c'est le Cameroun qui souffre. On a le droit de vivre partout au Cameroun, mais pourquoi à ce moment, on est en train de faire toutes ces choses Quand on avait eu l'indépendance et la réunification, les choses étaient claires. La fédéralisme, le fédéralisme. Pourquoi ils ont changé Aujourd'hui, on réclame seulement ça, mais ils sont en train de vous amener pour faire comprendre que nous sommes en train de faire un bagarre pour lutter contre les Français, les, 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 nos frères francophones. Ça, ce n'est pas vrai. La véritable, la véritable problème, c'est l'administration qui gère mal la situation. Mais si vous n'êtes pas prêt de réunir contre, contre nous pour combattre ce système, nous, on va de, demander notre indépendance. Et à ce cas, Dieu pour chacun. Je vous remercie. My brothers and sisters, let's keep the appointment on the tent here in Rome. We have to encounter the British Embassy. So I will recall to you people our topic of today. The Lord is telling us the enemies you see today, you shall see no more. I am calling on my brothers and sisters of the Southern Cameroon who have betrayed us to rethink if they can seek exile at this moment, it will be fast and good for them because they will be assassinated before the 11th of February. If they can seek exile, all those who signed, most of those who signed those papers, cast their plan to eliminate you people and say, since you people sign, we kill you people. We are calling for peaceful demonstration. We don't have arms. Our only arm is the cross of Jesus Christ. Our only arm is the Bible of Jesus Christ, the Holy Bible. Our only arm is the Holy Rosary. Our arms are our knees. We put them down and call on to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of battle, the mighty man of battle, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the El Shaddai, the Elohim. He is there to give us victory. So, my brothers and sisters, remain blessed, and the Lord will see us through. May we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mighty Father, King of heaven and earth, I thank you for this gift of the word you've given. Father, those who hear it, may your Holy Spirit help to interpret it, and to put the, the message. I know I am a poor sinner. I know I'm a common man. I know I, I don't have any intelligence. I don't know to do anything. But Father, you who said to Jeremiah that she will put the word in his mouth. Father, I know you have done it. I know you will take these words and put your knowledge in them and transmit them as you want them to happen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for our brothers and sisters and friends. We thank you for all those who are with us. And we ask you to convert those who are not with us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Your mighty God bless and keep us safe in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.